SMT Nation, let me have a moment of your time so I could tell you a little bit about our partner, Southern New Hampshire University, otherwise known as SNHU. SNHU is a great opportunity for a lot of you out there to possibly embark on a new career training, all right, getting a degree in a field that could be financially rewarding and intrinsically rewarding as well. It's a school that can give you world-class student support so you never feel left out. They've got great opportunities and programs, job projection for growth, flexible term starts 24-7 online accessibility. They also have a very extensive portfolio of degree programs with some of the lowest tuition rates across the country. And quite often you can transfer up to 90 credits toward any undergraduate degree that they offer. Different courses might include network security, application security, incident response, and investigation through their online BS and cybersecurity, one that I feel is quite compelling for a lot of you out there. So using our partner link down here in the description, as well as here on the screen, you guys can see it, snhu.edu forward slash need. You can check out their programs, get more information, register for courses, and sign up for your future. Consider SNHU for your future coursework needs and getting a career in something very rewarding. Check them out, link is in the description. SMT Nation, we back. Nation, we are testing all carriers, all things in Lakewood, Ohio. I'm actually uh, about a block away from my barbershop where I get my hair cut at. And I was like 20, 25 minutes early. So I thought, let's make some content for the channel. And let's do some speed testing on all of the networks. Uh, we got AT&T. We got uh, FirstNet. We got T-Mobile. We got Verizon. The only company I'm not testing is Dish project genesis because they're roaming on at&t in this location anyways first test at&t 416 down 23 up pretty good speeds this is on the 5g plus n77 we got c-band and dod across most of lakewood i think it reaches basically all over no packet loss on the test so we got a nice stable connection things looking good there for at&t on the 5g plus side always do a second test just in case you get some inconsistencies uh, you want to make sure you get the right results. All right, 416 down, and we got about 21 on the up. Latencies in the 40 to 50 range, typically, on the 5G Plus connection. No pack of loss. That's a good thing. Uh, what do we got? About 63 ping. Uh, let's go ahead and switch this sucker. Let's get this thing. Uh, actually, what we're going to do is it was on the 5G SA enabled. Uh, let's get that thing moved over. Uh, to the NSA just to see if it makes any difference. It shouldn't. I don't think it does, but let's check it out anyways. All right, we got 431 down and 26 up. I'd say that's just about the same performance as we saw on the SA 5G, so nothing really going there. Uh, let's go ahead and get this phone into LTE, otherwise known as 5GE on the AT&T network. Yep, it's terrible. Uh, but it's a good connection, I will tell you, for an LT connection. Quite capacitive, really nice, consistent, stable. I like it. All right, again, we're testing on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. One of my last few major testing sessions, you know, before I get the 15 Pro Max or something. All right, looks good. No packet loss. We got, uh, what is this, about 140 megabits per second down. We got about 18 up. Looking good. Ping times are good. Uh, loaded latencies looking good as well all right now uh we got the first net sim active now and a lot of a lot of folks don't know it but first net is technically different than at&t obviously the same type of assets and things like that and it's done through the same radio access network but technically it's on its own core it's different all right 144 down and we got about 24 up all right with respect to the first net this is the 5g network on first net all right, you see the latency is a little bit higher there for the loaded. Not sure why. 29 on the unloaded ping. Not sure why. Sometimes it's the server. You know, the, the, the traffic gets routed differently than the commercial network, so that could be a factor. Uh, and we got, again, like 148 down and about 28 up with latencies kind of high for the download loaded latencies. And I'm not really sure why. Uh, just seems to be a case here. Uh, let's go ahead and move this into LT, the last test on the low band 5G. Or not, not low band 5G, they don't have that here. They have N2, so it's dynamic spectrum sharing, the DSS. Uh, let's go ahead and try the LTE on FirstNet, see if there's any difference there. Not expecting much to change, but could be. All right, 95 down, 13 up. So the connection a little bit more capacitive. 
on the DSS 5G side of things. All right, let's go ahead and switch that sim. All right, now we've got the uh, now we've got the phone activating with the uh, T-Mobile sim. All right, this is a Magenta line. The AT&T line is a business line. The FirstNet line, obviously, all right, FirstNet. Um, but this one is a T-Mobile Magenta business line. All right, 345 down, 19 up. We got really good latencies from T-Mobile here in this market. Pretty pretty much always in the teens when things are working properly. All right, no pack of loss. Looks good. Load latencies, 585, 300, respectively. All right, no complaints. That looks pretty nice. Uh, you guys can see that uh, T-Mobile does have some usage in Lakewood. All right, they got a nice customer base here, good market share in this segment of town. And uh, a lot of younger folks using the T-Mobile network, so you got heavy data users. Plus, you got 5G home internet. All right, 385 down, 19 up. That seems pretty consistent. No packet loss present. Again, the latencies are very good. Usually the best within the market, typically. Uh, you'll see that the last set of testing was on SA 5G. I'm going to go ahead and disable that, and we're going to test the 5G on the non-standalone or NSA network segment. And uh, this test was weird and not what I expected. Uh, typically, it's usually better. Uh, 23 down and 6 up on the NSA. I'm shocked. Uh, we started out on 5G UC, and I think it bumped down to the N71 here. You'll see the loaded latency is super high, over 4,000. All right, so the, the, that connection, definitely something not right. Let's go ahead and run another test and see if it produces the same results. And actually, I think this test was even worse. All right, so this time around, we got 18 down and 8 up. The ping time at 27. I don't see any excessive jitter. Let's go ahead and check the packet loss, see what that looks like. No packet loss. But this time they hid the, the loaded download latency, so I don't know. Let's go ahead and airplane mode this. Something seems off, a little fishy. Uh, let's go ahead and reset the connection completely. Run the test back. See if maybe it's just something going on with the phone or the modem or whatever. I, I don't even know. Uh, this, but anyways, uh, typically the NSA connection is more stable for me. So I'm a little bit surprised by this. I'm a little thrown off. Was not expecting this. But let's go ahead and run it. You'll see it took a long time to connect to the server. All right, this one even worse. Three megabits down, one megabit up. I have no idea what is going on here. I don't know if it's connecting to a further site. I have no clue. I don't know if it's an iPhone related issue. I don't know if it's an eSIM related issue. No peg loss, but uh, definitely not a capacitive connection. That might actually buffer possibly, depending on what you're doing. Uh, let's go ahead and try this T-Mobile SIM now on LTE. Let's see if it's any better than whatever the hell that thing is that we just saw. <laughs> Hopefully it is. Uh, but that, that looked like N71, but like the congested version. So I don't even know. Uh, but this test actually much better. So if you were having trouble with the uh, T-Mobile the network being a little bit wonky, 78 down and 23 up seems much better. Maybe move the phone to LTE. And I hope a lot of folks out there realize that within their phone settings, you can adjust, you know, you can adjust your settings. Put it in LTE, try 5G, see which one is working better. Anyways, let's go ahead and get Verizon going here. Uh, we'll see what we got. 5G is enabled. The 5G SA is also enabled, although I don't think any of that matters currently, at least not yet. Uh, first speed test. Looks like we are on DSS, 38 down and 12.5 up, the nationwide 5G. No packet loss, but we got an extra uh, bad <laughs> loaded download latency at 3,000. Uh, so I'm, I'm surprised. I This whole area is blanketed with C-band and millimeter wave nodes. So I was kind of shocked by the results there. Anyways, let's try the pixel and see if that's any different. See if we get similar or different results compared to the iPhone. So this is a Pixel 7 Pro. Great phone, by the way. All right, so we got 40 down and... I don't know, what was that, like 8 megabits up or something like that? All right, it looks like the iPhone uh, just started a speed test. Started picking up the C-band. All right, 340 down and about 17 up. So that's an improvement. I'm not sure why it wasn't connecting initially, but it decided it wanted to pick it up. So that's good. That's a better quality connection than what we saw before on the DSS. No pack loss. That's good. We got latencies in the 20s. That's good, too. 
and uh, just ran the pixel, and the pixel picked up millimeter wave. All right, so we got connections all over the place here, people. 2,361 megabits on the downlink on the pixel, picking up the millimeter wave. 235 on the uplink. You guys will see the millimeter wave is definitely the GOAT. All right, when it comes to like absolute cheat codes and capacity, nothing better than millimeter wave. Still the ultimate in 5G goodness. All right, and you'll see this test even better. 3,900 megabits per second on the downlink. And it doesn't really get much faster than that. I've seen some 4,000 megabit speed tests before, 4,100, stuff like that. 279 on the uplink. Low to latency, super low. Yeah, I'm telling you guys, man, that millimeter wave is a game changer when it comes to capacity and just raw throughput. All right, good stuff there from the Pixel. Pick up the millimeter wave before the iPhone did, but the iPhone picked up the C-band before this, the Pixel did. All right, let's see what the what the iPhone's doing now. So this, this part's kind of like iPhone versus Pixel with respect to which bands it tends to kind of pick up on first. Uh, for whatever reason, the iPhone is preferring the mid-band, the N77 C-band. Uh, you will see that the Pixel now connecting to the C-band. I don't... This is kind of a crazy uh, layer cake overlap thing going on here right now. Uh, so 360s for the downlink on the iPhone. What do we got, like uh, 20s or 30s on the uplink? All right, let's try the Pixel again. Yep, we're still on the millimeter wave. Let's go ahead and um, let's confirm the band here, show you guys here. All right, so you will see all those carriers, eight channels, 100 megahertz each of N260. That's uh, 39 gigahertz frequency, very, very high. High frequency stuff, uh, super fast. All right, so there's that. We got two and a half gigs and 135 up. Uh, cheat code, anybody who's got a pixel, put it into low battery mode, and that sucker goes into LTE. So that's all I do. All right, and then for the iPhone, you got to go into your, you know, cellular settings and move that thing from 5G to LTE. All right, so the Pixel on LTE, you guys are going to see a very sizable drop off in speed. All right, 70 down and looks like just about 4 megabits on the uplink. So definitely want to be on 5G when you're on the Verizon network because quite often the LTE channels are saturated and congested in some way, whether it's downlink or uplink, or downlink and uplink, all right? Unless they have CBRS there, unless it's modernized, you got small cells, uh, it might be congested, all right? So being on the 5G side makes a lot of sense. Then you got Verizon's most capacitive experience on the ultra wideband. So get off those LTE channels, all right? Here's the iPhone. It looks like it is picking up the millimeter wave. We're up over a gigabit per second on the speed for downlink, and uplink should be usable as well. All right, looks decent. We're in the 40s. All right, so that's nice. So much better, right, than the uh, the LT experience, much better than the DSS, the 5G nationwide experience. Uh, you guys will see that the iPhone and the Pixel do things very differently, different behaviors, different characteristics. The modems are different. They're definitely not the same. Uh, and I guess, you know, you just kind of deal with what they give you. <laughs> All right, here it is on LTE. Let's try the iPhone out and see if it's similar, worse, or better than the Pixel. I don't really have any any issue with either of these phones. I will tell you guys, I, I think the cellular on the iPhone is fine. I think the cellular on the Pixel is fine. I don't really see issues with them. And I've been using both phones for about a year. Can't lose. Uh, 52 down and 20 up. I think uplink better on the iPhone. So... You know, you never know. That might be a difference maker for some folks, especially if you're on a video call or you're doing something that requires uplink. Good to have that extra throughput. All right, so that's the that's the testing here in today's video. Uh, I'm going to work my way over to the barbershop. I'm going to just walk it out here and just say a few things to close out the video. All right, so for starters, uh, you know, each of the carriers did pretty good. Uh, the only exception I would say was problematic was the 5G network testing when we went from SA 5G to NSA 5G on T-Mobile. AT&T's network seemed to be performing flawless. Uh, both the LTE and 5G side worked great. Even on FirstNet, seemed fantastic. No issues there at all whatsoever. 
Uh, you know, the T-Mobile problem we saw, the LTE was fine. The 5G UC on SA was fine. The NSA 5G UC was the problem. Uh, and then for Verizon, you see like all that dynamic presence that they have in the city. Millimeter wave, C-band. You got to kind of see the differences between the iPhone and the Pixel and how they kind of perform differently. Uh, but tell me what you guys think of the results and then share with me uh, what you guys experience with these phones if you're using them or if you use these services how are things in your home market uh again i'm i'm on my way to get my hair cut i had this time to do the testing i wanted to do it in depth i hope you guys enjoyed it and i did put uh chapter markers within the video timeline for you guys to jump back and to check on anything if you want to go back and rewatch segments of any of the testing but um that's pretty much it for this video i you guys see i go right back to my pixel i always do to me, it's my most reliable smartphone experience. I like the cellular experience, and it's a really nice phone. I'm, I'm super excited for the Pixel 8, what it brings to the table. I'm also excited about the iPhone, too, and uh, get myself one of those. Anyways, I'm here. I'm at the barber shop. I'm about to go get a nice haircut, get my beard game tight, and uh, we're going to ride out, guys. Thanks for watching. If you want to support the channel, there's links in the description, and there's ways to support us. And uh, do rate this video like, share, and if you're new here, subscribe for more content. We out this piece. Peace.